Hello there and welcome to another Coffee with Colin and thank you for joining me. This week I want to tell you a story, if I may, uh, a story that was told to me by a friend of mine where he and three of his buddies decided back in college, back in 2007, that during the summer, since they had some time to themselves, they would drive from Dublin to Moscow. <laughs> As you do, right? Dublin to Moscow, three and a half thousand kilometers if you were to go straight, uh, probably 5,000 kilometers by the time they meandered uh, their way through Europe, picking up the sights as they went. So this was about 2007. They had a Renault Scenic, uh, which was a turn of the century Renault Scenic, so an old car. The idea came about because two of the buddies, Gar and Griff, Griff is my friend, uh, Gar and Griff, their fathers had actually done this trip back in 1976, would you believe, in a Renault 14. It was during the bank strike uh, here in Ireland back in the days and the banks were closed for I don't know how long. But anyway, the two guys, the two fathers decided to go off in 1976, two best buddies, and drive to Moscow. They told their sons about this and the two sons grew up together and decided let's do the same. So in 2007, they roped in their other two friends, Sam and Ian, also known as Horse. Right? So, uh, so Sam and Ian get roped in to Gar and Griff's uh, mad idea, let's drive to Moscow, why, why wouldn't we? And uh, off they off they head anyway. And of course, uh, the internet wasn't uh, up to what it is today. Google Maps wasn't around, so they were using uh, a good old common sense and of course paper maps. Anyway. They get to Linz in Austria. They're making their way. Everything's going great. They get to Linz in Austria and uh, a Horse has decided that he's in charge, right? <laughs> and uh, Horse is apparently the guy who gets them up, makes sure they're on the road, make sure they're on the right road. We're going this direction. It's going to take us this amount of time, etc. He was the planner and the organizer in the group. And the lads were quite happy to let him off. So they let him off and he was telling them where to go, and etc. Anyway, they were going from Linz to Dresden. Okay, and hop in the, the, the car in Linz and they tootle off to Dresden and it's about 400 kilometers away. And uh, when they get to Dresden anyway, they park up and decide they're going to go on a walking tour of Dresden. Dresden, you may or may not know, was flattened during the war uh, by the, the Allied uh, forces. So uh, when uh, Horst took out the map to take them on a walking tour, it just didn't quite feel right. It just couldn't quite get his bearings. The buildings didn't quite look like what he The streets didn't really match and he was trying to figure out where he was, couldn't really get his bearings. But because he was large and in charge uh, and he'd been leading the charge ever since they left Dublin, uh, the lads decided just to follow him. So follow, the, follow him they did for four hours, right? Couldn't find out where they were. And he kept saying, when I get to the river, when I get to the river, we'll be grand. When I get to the river, I'll know where I am. So eventually they get to the river and they say, right horse, where are we? And he said, I don't know. So I'm lost, don't know. So they took the map off him and realized in Dresden, at the river in Dresden, they realized that Horst was looking at a map of Linz, right? <laughs> so they'd spent four hours walking around in the summer heat following the leader, and the leader was following the wrong map. The leader was following a map of Linz, right? So they were never going to find anything. No matter how quickly they walked, no matter how long they walked for, they were never going to find what they were looking for because they were following the wrong map. And it got me thinking that too many of us do that in our lives. Too many of us do that in our lives. Too many of us haven't even decided what the map of our life looks like. I did a blog some time back and I asked the question, what does success in your life look like? A lot of people don't know. A lot of people are just walking around, driving around, following the map they were given by their parents, following the map of the career that they fell into when they came out of school or came out of college. And they haven't really taken the time to ask themselves, am I following the right map? So one of the things that I'm passionate about is getting people to ask themselves, what would their life look like if their life were successful? And I use the map analogy that uh, if, if, if success in your life means that metaphorically you arrive in Letterkenny, Letterkenny being in, in North Donegal in Ireland, if this is the map of Ireland, and you live as I do around Limerick, well then uh, uh, it's really important for you to be successful, to even attempt to be successful. It's really important that you've got the right map and you realize that that's the direction you need to be headed. Too many people are, are just driving around, running around, walking around in their lives in, in a daze, going around in circles and uh, then wondering why their life isn't successful. Other people are uh, getting in their car and they're shooting off in all sorts of directions, metaphorically heading to Tipperary or Kerry or Cork or Dublin because they haven't really figured out that Letterkenny is where they want to go. I'm using Letterkenny obviously as a, as a metaphor, but you really have to figure out what it is you're looking for. What does success look like for you? And once you know what success looks like for you, well, then you have to take stock of where you are now. To get to your letter, Kenny, you must know where you're starting from. If you don't know where you're starting from, how do you know what direction to go? So you must figure out where you're starting from. You must figure out where you want to head to. And then you must figure out what are the waypoints on the way. But if you don't have the right map, it's not going to happen for you. 
You can drive as long as you want. You can drive as fast as you want. You can walk as fast as you want. It's just not going to happen for you. So let's take a lesson from the misfortune of our four friends, our four buddies, uh, Gar and Griff and Horse and Sam. And, uh, and unlike them, let's make sure we've got the right map for our lives. If we've got the right map, great. If we don't have the right map, it doesn't matter how far we go. It doesn't matter how long we work. It doesn't matter how hard we work. It doesn't matter how quickly we work. We're never going to get there. Delighted to say that Gar and Griff and Horse and Sam are still buddies today. And thank you for joining me for this week's Coffee with Column. I hope and trust that you got something from it. If you have done so and you think somebody else would benefit, I'd be delighted if you'd pass the link on. If you've enjoyed it and you'd like more of this type of stuff, pop to the homepage, columnobrianmotivation.com. Leave me some details and I'll make sure you get a link like this every week. And most importantly, please consider what's been shared here today and apply it into your thinking for this next week. And then equally as importantly, please come back next week and join me for another coffee and I'll ruminate on some other aspect of life and business that I stumble across in the intro. Meantime, Get some or and or get some good coffee, get some fresh air. If you spend a lot of time alone, please go meet some other people. If you spend a lot of time with people, please go meet yourself, spend a little time with yourself, get to know yourself a little bit better. And then when the time is right, and only when the time is right, get your head back in the game, get organized for the week ahead, get stuck in and make next week count. And I'll see you here this time next week. Slaughter. I really love great coffee. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.